in the last stream chat, we were, of course, working on setting up all of these generators. We crafted them all. Uh, we made enough fuel for all of them to run for up to five minutes. And uh, we got them all going to power our rainbow generator to allow us to make these rainbow stones inside of our resonator. That also required a bunch of speed upgrades and, of course, a ton of grid power. Thankfully, we now have four dragon egg mills producing uh, just shy of a thousand grid power. We've got 900 and a 64 going right there. Uh, unfortunately, we are at a 55% efficiency loss, but for the most part, that is fine. Since the end of the last stream, I have taken the uh, dragon data model out of the uh, the learner over here, out of the simulation chamber, uh, because if you remember, it did use uh, like over 2,000 redstone flux per tick. And so uh, in the interest of not uh, tanking all of our power into making get more dragon eggs, uh, which I did do accidentally, you'll see we do have uh, three more uh, in the system here, which we don't need right now. So we could use it, of course, to get even more grid power if we wanted to. Uh, but right now, I think that the uh, the 1,000 that we have is probably going to be more than enough going forward. And so now, chat, we really just need to complete this final quest here and move on to the third page of advancements. And I believe the final page of advancements for, uh, for Levitated. So to do that, we have to get, um, of course, a portal to the overworld. The portal to the overworld is made using 10 rainbow blocks, or at least, I believe, 10 rainbow blocks. Now, to make these, as we showed in the last stream, we have to right-click a bifrost block with a rainbow ingot. So the rainbow ingots are made in the arc furnace with the rainbow stones, ender crystals, prescient crystals, and the blocks of uranium. Now, none of that, I don't think, is going to be too, too difficult. It is going to take us a minute here, but I think for the most part, it's not going to be too bad. Uh, the first question I have is how much uranium do we have? We have 16 uranium. We can, of course, get more uh, over in the nether. This stuff does seem fairly abundance and uh, if we run it through the uh, sag mill which i'm assuming we can do yeah we get two uranium dust per uranium nether ore and so we can fairly easily double that to uh, to 32 uranium ingots now if we're going to get 10 rainbow ingots that does mean that we need 10 blocks of uranium and therefore that we need 90 uh, uranium uh, ingots going forward so uh, the 32 that we have here uh, is going to get us about a third of the way there but that's a good start nonetheless as for everything else here. The ender crystal is made in a soul binder with a soul of an enderman with a vibrant crystal. The vibrant crystal, fairly easy stuff. We are going to have to pull out our Amadron tablet to request more emeralds, and we are going to have to craft up some more vibrant alloys, but those are, are pretty easy. And in fact, I think we might even have um, a couple of them left. Yeah, we have two left, but we're going to probably need to make more uh, fairly soon here. Uh, the soul binder, is a little tricky, but I think very doable. We do need some uh, mob heads and a soul machine chassis, not to be confused with a regular machine chassis. So once again, we are going to have to jump back in to a little bit of pneumatic craft and, and hopefully make use of some of our printed circuit boards, which I believe we do have um, almost ready to go. I think they do require some transistors and capacitors, but I think we're basically, yeah, almost there. We actually have one uh, printed circuit board ready to go. And so maybe we won't even have to, uh, to work with the unassembled ones. Like, maybe one will be enough. We'll see. Uh, and of course, we also need to make an arc furnace, which is a pretty hefty multi-block from Immersive Engineering. Uh, I do believe that my manual is currently hiding away in here. So uh, the arc furnace is under heavy machinery and arc furnace. And uh, this thing is a pretty massive 5x5x5 five by five by five machine. And much like all of the other Immersive en uh, Engineering machines that we've used up until this point, as you can see, it is going to require a ton of steel. And so what I did before the stream chat is I grabbed some of our 30,000 iron. I crafted that into uh, two stacks of iron blocks, which uh, you'll see doesn't really use that much in the grand scheme of things. We still have 29,000 iron ingots left. And I placed those over in here. Uh, you'll see that we have managed to burn through a few of them. You'll see a stack is still in here and, uh, and 45 blocks are still in there. But that does mean that we now have 23 uh, blocks of steel uh, in this cache here. And I will put those other two stacks up there so that hopefully, you know, over time we will get a another hundred uh, or so blocks of uh, steel. And uh, I am fairly hopeful that this is enough steel, although 300-bit stacks might be a little short. I'm actually not too, uh, not too sure. But uh, I think that I'm probably going to put that arc furnace down here. I kind of like the idea of kind of embedding it in this wall a little bit. You know, if we do one, two, three, four, five by two, three, four, five, just kind of have it in the wall there. I think that could work quite well. And you'll see that in building this room, I did kind of dig through some of the, the pre-existing mines that I'd uh, already dug out previously. 
But uh, yeah, I think that's where we're going to put that. That should work just fine. And um, also, something that I uh, should have been doing, or should have done, I should say, in uh, a previous stream chat, is, uh, is make more travel anchors. We, uh, we do a lot of traveling to that lower floor. And uh, while we do have a travel anchor to take us here, you know, it's still quite a, a walk all the way down to, uh, to there. It would be, I think, a lot easier if we had not only a travel anchor down in the, uh, the rainbow room, but also uh, that extra travel anchor kind of over here uh, for when we want to work with uh, deep mob learning as well. So uh, let's quickly go ahead and uh, repair the old pickaxe, I think, here, which is uh, easier said than done these days because we are now uh, pretty much out of, uh, of endstone. All of it's, of course, being used over by the old, uh, the old orchid over there. But uh, let's see, do we have what it takes to make two more travel anchors? I think we should. Yeah, it looks like we're just going to have to get two more of the old uh, pulsating crystals here, which again, really shouldn't be too bad. Pulsating iron, of course, is enderpearls and iron, both of which we're now making uh, from our uh, deep mob learning setup. So we're going to get like, we just have a ton of those ready to go. And a little bit of uh, pulsating iron later. That should be all of the nuggets and hopefully some crystals. Nice. And then uh, I'm fairly certain we have the conduit binder. We do indeed. So we'll put one down. Um, I think basically in the exact same place we've put this one down. And it's a little annoying because this uh, room is not like an odd number wide, so it is kind of offset uh, relative to the uh, the doorway at least. But uh, I guess we're putting it on like the far left side there. So I think right about here. Sure. And I'll call this... Uh, Deep mobs for now, because that's kind of what we got going on over here. That's fine. And then let's go and put down the uh, the old rainbow room travel anchor as well. Someone does make a good point in that, and we can also move this now, I guess, as well. Actually, we don't need the resonator uh, in the middle of the room here. We'll call this uh, rainbow room. Uh, that we can potentially look at getting the uh, the staff of traveling. Now, uh, the reason I haven't made this so far is that it requires an ender crystal, uh, which requires a soul binder. And the soul binder, as I mentioned a moment ago, is a little bit of a, uh, of a pain to make. However, we do have to make the soul binder in order to get the uh, overworld portal going. And so I think we might look at some point later in the stream at potentially getting a, a staff of traveling. Uh, these allow you to travel to travel anchors without being on travel anchors. So right now we, of course, have to be on um, a travel anchor in order to be able to, to travel to other travel anchors. But uh, with the staff of traveling, you can be anywhere in the world and uh, if you could just scroll to it on your hotbar, it will show you all the travel anchors and you can go directly uh, directly to them, which is pretty, pretty nice. But uh, like I said, for now, let's see, chat, if we can't get all of the uh, materials required for the old arc furnace here. Actually, chat, real quick, I have a question because I'm not quite sure why, but it seems like I'm wearing something or, or have something on me that is causing... This, uh, this grass to turn into dirt as I walk across it. Does anyone know why that is? Is it like a feature of the Elementium armor maybe? Or like, uh, oh, it's the evil infused shuriken. Is that what's causing it? Like if I put this uh, away, am I good? Oh, I see, okay. So just a quick heads up. If you uh, do have a tool that is evil infused, it will burn your, uh, your dirt or your grass into dirt, which Kind of sucks. You know, it looks a bit terrible when it's in uh, in dirt form. Of course, the grass does grow back, but uh does take a while. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six blocks of steel. Now, that's that bit taken care of. We still have 192 steel, so we're still looking all right for now. One cauldron, also very doable. We've got way more iron than we need at the moment, at least. Uh, 14 steel sheet metal slabs. Steel sheet metal slabs so i assume we have to make the steel sheet metal first we do indeed uh, which does require steel plates and if we need 14 of these that means we're gonna have to make three lots of that which means nine sheet metal which means uh 12 steel plates which is very doable i will i think maybe make like half a stack of steel plates because we do also need and maybe we need like a full stack of steel plates uh, but we also need a full 27 reinforced blast brick, which is interesting. So we need like another whole blast furnace worth of, uh, of blast brick there. Uh, we need 10 light and five heavy engineering blocks. Heavy engineering blocks do require steel plates. And if we need five of these, we're going to have to make six, which means like four 
12? Yes, yeah, so I'll do half a stack of um, of steel plates here. I think we're going to need maybe like 25-ish steel plates uh, throughout the course of, uh, of today's stream. Um, I do want to make sure, of course, that we swap that out for the, uh, the old metal press, like so. There we go. It's going to work out just fine. While that's chugging away over there, let's go see if we can't make uh, any of the other items here. I know we need one uh, redstone engineering block. Do we have one of those lying around? We do. Good stuff. You make those uh, in batches of two. So we had one from a previous recipe. Five steel scaffolding. I did see that we had some steel scaffolding uh, over here. We have one. I believe it's made in sets of six. Yeah, so we just need to make one more batch here and we should be good. Beautiful. I guess we'll do the reinforced blast brick. And actually, now that I think about it, doesn't that require steel as well? Yeah, so maybe we'll do like another half stack of, uh, of steel plates, like a full stack of steel plates. Uh, because if we need 27 more for the uh, for the blast furnace, it does seem like that's probably not going to be a bad idea here. Yeah, other than that, we of course need 27 more actual blast brick, which does require uh, 27 nether brick, which we have over a thousand of, uh, 27 regular brick, which we have uh, almost 200 of, and then uh, 27 blaze powder, which we currently uh, do not have any of, Chan. So it appears like we're going to have to take a quick old uh, trip on back to our good old friend, the, uh, the blazers. Now... What we should probably do if we're going to go and fight blazes is we, is we should almost certainly make a, uh, a blaze data model because we've definitely killed more than six blazes since the start of the playthrough. And uh, I think it would be very nice if going forward we didn't have to keep going to fight blazes every time that we need blaze rods. Uh, it'd be much nicer instead if we could just craft some polymer clay, uh, put that polymer clay into the old uh, simulation chamber and then, you know, simulate the killing of some blazes uh, to save us all the hassle, right? So uh, let's go ahead and make another one of those. We do, of course need a bit of gold, which we are sorely lacking right now due to its use in uh, the production of polymer clay. There we go. Boom. And boom. All right. So uh, 39 blaze rods is, of course, very nice. But then on top of that, we do, of course, now have uh, that blaze data model. And so uh, it is up at, uh, at advanced. Yeah, and a few away from uh, the next tier, but that's fine. Is the next tier superior? Yeah, superior. That's fine. So uh, this one does, I believe, much like the uh, Wither data model, output hellish matter. So the kind of problem with our deep mob learning setup right now is that we don't have enough gold, right? The reason we don't have enough gold is because the way that we're making gold right now is using hellish matter. And we're not getting hellish matter because we turned off the Wither skeleton data model because it uses uh, so much redstone flux. So... This one does use significantly less redstone flux, and so I am quite tempted uh, to go ahead and set that to extract always active, kind of essentially turning this back online. And then uh, if we do grab a little bit of, uh, of gold here and like kind of manually make some polymer clay, we can kind of kickstart this uh, system again. Like that. So basically all of that polymer clay should end up in uh, in here, which is going to keep simulating the killing of, uh, of blazes, hopefully get us some more hellish matter. Uh, that hellish matter should then hopefully be used in conjunction uh, with our sand or with our glowstone even. Ah, that's the other issue, of course. We do have a little bit of glowstone. And you know what? I will do a quick stock up on, uh, on glowstone here. I'll go and put uh, you know a bunch of glowstone into our duplicating mana pool just to get some more going. But this really is the kind of thing that we should teach our uh, our system to do, I think. Like in an ideal world, we do want our... Uh, and also I should put this uh, pickaxe over here. But yeah, in, in an ideal world, we do want our system, much like with sand and clay over here, uh, to be able to make more glowstone as and when it, uh, it needs it. We don't really want to be doing this uh, manually. All right, so hopefully all of our steel plates are done. They are indeed fantastic. And now that we have all of the blaze powder as well... Uh, we should be able to go ahead and make some uh, blast brick here. We need 27. We can then go ahead and craft all those with some steel plates. Again, we need 27. Perfect. And at that point, we're actually one step closer there. So now that we have the steel plates, let's see if we can't make some of that uh, sheet metal. So we needed, I believe, 12 sheet metal to make the 14 sheet metal slabs. 
However, we do also need, I think, sheet metal on its own. Yeah, we need eight sheet metal blocks just kind of on their own there. So uh, steel, sheet metal, we have three. Unfortunately, that's one shy of where we need to be because that puts us at seven. So we are going to have to make um, another set here. That is totally fine. And then at that point, chat, we're just missing the light and heavy engineering blocks. Now, the light engineering blocks do require iron plates. We have 17. Just to be on the safe side, I will go and put down another 32 iron in, uh, in here and start making those into plates just in case we need them. And then if we grab some copper over in here, this is uh, the correct blueprint. We can do U and U. That's going to get us eight, which I believe is good for eight light engineering blocks because it requires two, but you make two. Yeah, so that's almost all of them. Actually, we already had some. Nice. So that is uh, all 10 light engineering blocks taken care of. And now we just need five heavy engineering blocks. Perfect. All right, heavy engineering block. This guy is uh, going to require some electrum and also more steel. And of course, uh, it also is going to mean that we do need to make uh, at least six of these, which means we need 12 steel plates, which thankfully uh, we do have. So you and you. Let's not go crazy on this. Let's put in just enough to make the six we need. And then uh, do we have any Electrum? My guess is no. Oh, we totally do. Nice. Okay, in that case, then never mind, Chet. Let's go and make a few pistons. And that should be everything that we need, Chet, to make five heavy engineering blocks. Nice. And so that should be everything for the Arc Furnace. It is indeed. So if we head on down to the Rainbow Room, and if we clear out a 5x5 five five area over here, of course, as of right now, it's going to look a little janky because there's just endstone back here. But I think eventually um, I will go around and uh, kind of fill in the uh, the side walls with, you know, cobblestone to match the uh, the rest of the room. So let's take a look at the old, uh, the old book here, shall we, chat? The, uh, can we pause? Yeah, so the bottom level is basically all sheet metal. I should... Uh, bring down like all of the items I know we're going to need here but uh, it's basically a cauldron at the front a scaffolding to the left a heavy engineering block at the back okay so we'll do heavy engineering block at the back cauldron right at the front scaffolding right about there it was then a block of steel I believe here and here with sheet metal kind of around like this and then slabs basically in almost all of the rest yeah nice following that the next layer up is the redstone engineering block some heavy and light engineering blocks which are all very doable so the redstone one goes here the lights go here the heavy go here and here we then have again two more blocks of steel and then six of our reinforced blast brick. Perfect. Level three is uh, very much so more of the same. We've got three more uh, light engineering along the back like that. We have two more blocks of steel here and here. Those back corners, this time around, are sheet metal. And then I believe we have the reinforced blast brick that comes out like so. And then level, actually, does it come out one more than that? Oh, it does, it comes out four blocks, so it's actually one more like this. And then, uh, you guessed it, at the top here, it is uh, yet more of the same scaffolding here and here, this time with uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and the final tier is two more scaffolding and three more light engineering blocks. And that should, chat, I think, be everything. So I believe the way that uh, you assemble this is uh, you take the old hammer and you shift right click on the cauldron. You do indeed, and boom, we have an arc furnace. Again, it looks a little weird with the end stone back there, but we'll uh, we'll fill it in to look a little bit more like the uh, the rest of the room. Uh, for now, though, we do have to get power into this thing. I believe that power goes in at uh, the back, which is kind of one of the benefits to the positioning of our arc furnace, because uh, directly above this is our generator. Yeah, so the, uh, the power goes in on these kind of uh, outlet-looking ports right here, these three. 
There's also a, uh, a slot at the back here for byproducts that are made. So for example, uh, if we look at the rainbow ingots that we're going to make, uh, the byproduct here is slag. So the slag will be outputted uh, from this back port here. For now though, let's see if we can't make a few more energy conduits maybe. I don't know if 12 is, uh, is quite going to be enough. It looks like it might have to be enough though because we don't have enough uh, conduit binder. Uh, now this thing does use 4,096 redstone flux per tick. Uh, I should probably bookmark the rainbow generator here, but uh, if we look, it does require 4,096 uh, redstone flux per tick, which is e the exact amount that our diesel generator can output. Obviously, you only need to run it at, uh, you only need to give it 4,096 redstone flux per tick if you want it to run it uh, at full speed. Uh, it can run on less. It will just take a little bit longer to get all of its stuff done, which uh, is kind of perfectly fine. We don't need that many uh, rainbow ingots. And uh, realistically, also, we only need one uh, connection here. I know I've put down three, but uh, given that our cables can do uh, 5,000 RF per tick, we probably only needed to connect uh, the one up there. But uh, either way, that should now be pretty much ready to go. So now that we have that chat, we have to go and look at uh, getting all the actual uh, resources here. And I think I'll start with uh, by far the easiest one, which is uh, uranium. As mentioned before, and uh, as shown in our sag mill, uh, we do have 32 uranium dust, which I'm assuming we can just fairly easily smelt up into uranium ingots. Yeah, but we do need like another stack of um, of uranium ingots because we need 90 in, in total for nine blocks worth. So uh, once again, chat, it is uh, that time to, uh, to dump our inventory and head on through to the nether probably shouldn't keep the rainbow stones on me just in case anything does happen you know they're a bit of a a pricey item all things considered right so someone has pointed out uh, in the twitch chat that uh, we do indeed have to have graphite electrodes in the arc furnace for it to work now to make the graphite electrodes we do need hop graphite ingots uh, we need three of these graphite electrodes, which means we're getting 12 hop graphite ingots. And uh, we have made these before. These are made uh, from hop graphite dust, which is made from squeezing coke dust, which is made from coal coke. So we need eight coke dust per one uh, hop graphite dust. And if we need four hop graphite dust, that means we need 32 coke dust. So we are gonna have to get uh, 32 coal coke. So let's, in that case, chat, go and grab some coal. And in fact, you know what? I might just grab uh, a few blocks of coal here and put those into uh, one of our coke ovens to hopefully get us a, a couple of blocks of coal coke. It is going to take a while. You can see the percentage bar there in the top left is extraordinarily slow. But uh, hopefully by the time we've got all of the uh, required items uh, to actually make the rainbow generator, uh, we will hopefully have all of the uh, stuff required, all of the coal coke required to actually get the, uh, the graphite electrodes going as well. Uh, but for now, let's go back and see if we can't get uh, some uranium, shall we? Uh, a stack and three uranium is actually more than enough. That was a lot faster than I thought it was going to be. All right. So that is uh, well over 90 uranium there. So we can craft that all up uh, into some uh, UPS uranium blocks there. Perfect. So those are uh, ready for the future. Uh, now let's take a look at these other two. So they both do require the soul binder. So let's bookmark this guy. Now it does require four salami ingots, which are Fairly easy to make. The salami ingots, uh, if I'm not mistaken, are uh, soul sand and gold over in the old alloy smelter here. And I'm thinking we can probably make the uh, gold ingots there. Perfect. So you and you. That should get us four salarium ingots fairly easily. Nice. Uh, the soul machine chassis requires a printed circuit board, a simple machine chassis, a stone burnt, and then a soul attuned dye blend, which is four quarts, one organic black dye, two organic brown dye, and then two salt powder. I believe we did make the organic brown dye in the last stream and we did it via the use of, uh, of leaves. Uh, we need a little bit more, I think, of the old um, trimmings. I can't remember exactly what it was we were after. Oh yeah, the twigs and prunings, that's the one. Uh, those do allow us to make the organic brown dye. Uh, do we have one left? We do have one left, but I think we need two, right, for the, uh, the chassis here. Yeah, we need two to get six solar tuned dye blend. So we are gonna have to get some more twigs and prunings. I think we need a 12 in total to make another uh, two organic brown dye. Um, on top of that, the salt powder is made by sag milling solarium ingots. So we do need two more solarium ingots, which means I'm gonna, I am gonna have to grab uh, a little bit more in the way of, uh, of gold here. 
and of course a little bit more in the way of soul sand but that seems very doable uh, so do we have twigs oh we have six left nice so i believe it is 12 twigs and prunings and one cactus over in the alloy smelter it is perfect that's the organic, oh, that's the organic brown dye uh, do we have any blank dye it would look like the answer to that question is no for the organic black dye, we need uh, charcoal or coal dust and some more slime. That seems very, very doable. We already have coal dust lying around. Perfect. So we'll take six of that. Uh, we will once again take another cactus. We do want to make sure we always have at least one so we can uh, grow more. But for now, we'll go and throw that in there. Perfect. And boom. Solar Tune dye blend. Nice. So this guy here really shouldn't be too difficult. We do, I believe, have what it takes to make another simple machine chassis. We do. Uh, stone burnt, I believe we have lying around. We do as well. And then the uh, printed circuit board, I sh think we saw earlier in the stream, is uh, hanging around over in here. It is. Now, uh, we did, of course, a little while back, uh, break our pressure machine, our air compressor. So I will go and make another one of those real quick. Hopefully we've got all of the uh, required parts. It would seem like we almost do. We just need some more uh, end stone, which thankfully we can now request that our system uh, craft for us. All right. So I will be a little bit more careful, I think, this time with uh, the whole pressure chamber. We do still have the safety valve uh, on here, so hopefully it should be okay. But, uh, but let's see. Let's go and uh, undo and redo you. So up here, we want to drop in our PCB. The one die blend, one simple machine chassis, and one stone burn, right? That's the uh, the recipe there. And then we want to get that up to 4.5 bars of pressure. And uh, we do, of course, have the old uh, speed upgrades as well to really get that going. You got to be careful because 4.5 is very close. There we go to uh, to actually, you know, five, which is kind of where it gets a bit dangerous. But, uh, but there we go. That is the soul machine chassis taken care of. Now things do get a little bit more complicated when it comes to the uh, mob heads required here. Uh, the Enderman head, of course, is going to be a piece of cake. We have 88 of those lying around uh, in our system because we've been fighting so many uh, of the. Uh, we've, we've been killing so many Enderman with our cleaver uh, that we've managed to just kind of accumulate those over the uh, over the playtime so far. However, the zombie skeleton and creeper heads are a little bit more tricky because we don't actually get to uh, any of these mobs until we get to the overworld. Uh, thankfully, there are custom recipes using the runic altar for each of these, and they don't look too bad. They all require a wither skeleton skull. They all require pixie dust. It would seem they also all require a prismarine shard, and they all require... Oh, no, so, okay, yeah, one requires a bone, one requires rotten flesh, and one requires gunpowder, but other than that, they're all the same. Uh, someone asked, can you use um, all the same head? I don't think so. Oh, we actually have a zombie head? I assume maybe we got that from uh, killing pigmen, maybe? But uh, no, unfortunately, it doesn't look like you can use any head for the recipe. It does have to be uh, the four listed here. The zombie head is already done, though, which is nice. So all we need now, then, is the skeleton and creeper head. So let's see. Do we have two with the skeleton skulls? Prismarine looks easy enough, I guess. I was going to say, I don't know how we're going to get that, but uh, apparently it's it's very doable. Uh, golden apples should also be fairly doable. We just have to uh, quickly run some of our gold ore through the old pickaxing here. Perfect. 31 is more than enough. Good stuff. And then what else are we missing? We need two pixie dust, which is two mana pearls, two wither skeleton skulls. Let's got those uh, ender pearls to turn into mana pearls, to turn into pixie dust. And then, other than that, we just need uh, bones and gunpowder, both of which I believe we should have. So one gunpowder and one bone. And that should be everything. So let's get two mana pearls. Let's get two pixie dust. 
Perfect. Let's do Pixie Dust, Prism Marine Shard, Golden Apple, Gunpowder, Skull. Beautiful. I do wonder if we're going to need a... Um, it does use quite a bit of mana, eh? Uh, we should have enough. I do wonder if it needs a Living Rock at the end here, like a regular... I assume, like, the way that this has been kind of coded is that it's been added as a custom rune recipe, so it is still kind of classified uh, by Batania, at least, as a uh, as a rune. So I would assume that we do have to utilize the uh, the Living Rock and the Wand of the Forest at the end here. Yeah, it does require the, uh, the Living Rock there. But there we go. That gets us a Creeper Head, and then we're going to do the exact same thing, of course, uh, but this time with the uh, the Bone here. And that should basically be everything for the Soulbinder, right? Yeah, that looks pretty doable. We've got the, uh, the Salami Mingots there, so that's all good. And then from there, getting the Ender Crystal and the uh, the Prescient Crystal really shouldn't be too bad. Uh, I think the Ender Crystal... Actually, they both look... Oh, yeah, they're both of, like, equal difficulty there. So we do need nine Ender Crystals and nine Prescient Crystals. So we need 18 Vibrant Crystals, because each one does need a Vibrant Crystal here, uh, which means we need 18 Emeralds, and then enough uh, enough Nuggets for that. We also need 18 Soul Vials with Endermen in them, and 18 Soul Vials with Shulkers in them. Of course, the Endermen one, they're going to be significantly easier. Uh, we're going to have to go a little further afield, I think, to find 18 Shulkers, because I'm fairly certain we've uh, killed almost all of the Shulkers uh, in this tower here. There might be one or two left, but for the most part, they are almost all gone. But there we go, that is that bit taken care of. And then uh, over in here, let's do you and you. And there we go, we have a soul binder. Nice. And of course, yes, it is, uh, it is 10. Uh, sorry, not 9. Yeah, we do need 10, uh, 10 rainbow ingots. So we are going to need 10 ender crystals and 10 rainbow stones. Uh, 10 ender crystals and 10 uh, pressing crystals even. And uh, for now, I'll put this guy down like right about there. So yeah, we can unbookmark the soul binder now. Now we just need to get 10 Ender Crystals and 10 Prescient Crystals. So I think we'll start, maybe, by trying to get 18 Emeralds. So let me head down over here and uh, see if we can't get our Amadron Tablet. I should definitely be uh, bringing this guy with me. And if we head on over to the Metal Press, we could hopefully charge this guy up uh, over here. And I'm very much so hoping that, much like before, we have the option to trade coal for emeralds. Because not only do we already have quite a bit of coal, but we could, of course, uh, duplicate our coal fairly easily uh, using the old uh, mana pool. So, let's see. I will head back out over to uh, where I assume we still have our, uh, our delivery chests over here. Yeah, you can see the little like, light there through the wall. So, if I put... All of our coal in here. We actually already have nine emeralds in there, which I was not anticipating, but that's good to know nonetheless. Uh, is there an option to buy emeralds? There is. So we need nine more, I guess. Place order. That should take us to the 18. I don't know why I think it's 18, chat. I keep getting that wrong. I need 20. So actually, let's get uh, two more on top of that. For some reason, I keep thinking we only need nine of these, but we do not. We need 10. And uh, hopefully, any moment now, this guy's going to drop in with all of the uh, the required emeralds there. Two more coming in from this guy as well. And that, uh, that should be everything on the emerald one, at least. It is. Nice. Okay, cool. So that bit is uh, is taken care of. And, uh, and now we just need to actually make the crystals, right? So the Enderman version, the Ender Crystal, really shouldn't be too bad. We do already have some soul vials uh, in the system. We actually have four Shulka soul vials, which is super nice. I assume we got those maybe out of End City chests, although I'm not sure, uh, not certain on that. Uh, these are also fairly easy to make as well. It's just uh, some uh, fused quartz glass and then some solarium as well. And all you have to do to put an Enderman in it is just right-click on the Enderman when you have the uh, the glass soul vial in hand. So uh, we'll go ahead and grab another one of those guys as well. And then if we uh, bring those back and throw them into the soul binder, which does need a capacitor. So for now, I will take one of these octatic capacitors and throw that in like so. We can then put in the soul vial for Enderman and the crystal, which we do need to make, actually. Do we have what it takes to make 10 vibrant crystals? Um, I think the answer is uh, is maybe almost, but we are going to have to get 
some uh, more vibrant alloys, which are energetic alloys with enderpearls. For now, though, we'll do the uh, the one, like so. And if we put that in over here, that should, you do have to give it XP. But uh, again, we can get our XP fairly easily with the extra terrestrial matter here. Perfect. And uh, there we go, one ender crystal. So we should do that, you know, 10 more times for the uh, enderman, and or nine more times for the enderman, and then uh, 10 times total for the shulkers. So I'll take all of these if I can. Like, we'll make as many of those like as we possibly can just right away here. We might have to make some more alloys, although actually, no, we are perfectly fine there. We got one extra even. So, uh, yeah, this shouldn't be too difficult, I don't think, chat. It's done pretty quickly. Like, the uh, the actual process of uh, although the progress even of the bar here really doesn't take too, too long, which is nice. I think I will. To make my life a little easier, we'll do the shulker ones now, given that we have them. And, uh, again, it's pretty much the exact same recipe. Yeah, it's a, a salt bar with a shulker and a vibrant crystal. Uh, so it's exactly the same setup, but just this time with a different uh, a different vial, and this time a little bit more uh, in the way of experience. All right, so we are four-tenths of the way there on the uh, prescient crystals, and four-tenths, or two-tenths even, or one-fifth, as some might say, on uh, the old ender crystals here. So again, we'll do the enderman first, given that we have, you know, a p unending supply of enderman nearby. Unfortunately, we don't have eight soul vials here, so we are going to have to do one more trip after this. Uh, and then the hard part is going to be, uh, I guess, trying to find some shulkers, which I don't think is going to be too bad. We might have to do a little bit of flying out to, uh, you know, some kind of nearby island to actually hopefully get more shulkers. But uh, finding six more shulkers, I really don't think is going to be too difficult for us. So there is the ten ender crystals, and we have exactly six soul vials left for the uh, the six shulker that we need now. Uh, we do need two more of the uh, of the vibrant crystals there, so we do need to get at least a little bit more in the way of those uh, vibrant nuggets, but that should be enough to get one more vibrant crystal. Perfect. So now we've got six vibrant crystals, and uh, we're ready for six shulkers. So I guess, Chant, let's go see if we can't find a shulker. Now, I think the fastest way there might be via our waystone. We did find, like, a new acid plains biome. And I don't know if someone's been in this one. It doesn't look like they have. So I'm quite hopeful that maybe we can just pop in here. And this might even be the one that has a spawner in it, actually. I'm not quite sure. I do see a few hanging around up there as well. But we'll uh, we'll pop in and grab this guy first before he can... I was going to say before he can attack us, but that seems not to be the case. That's fine. So that's two. Who else we got here? We got a third one. Any takers? Looks like there is a spawner. You think it's like down here, maybe? Okay. Oh, yeah, there is a spawner. It's right there, eh? Three, four, five, and six. You then do a quick slash home. And that should be everything we need. So we'll throw in all of these again and do the old XP give. I'm hopeful we have enough with the 27 uh, that we have, but I guess we'll find out momentarily. And there we go. We have 10 prescient crystals. Nice. So that should, chat, I believe, be everything. We have... 10 rainbow blocks, we have 10 ender crystals, we have 10 prescient crystals, and we have what it takes uh, to make 10, and we also have 10 uranium blocks. We do, nice, perfect. The question now is, do we have coal coke? And the answer would appear to be yes. It looks like our coke ovens here have done a pretty good job. I did move half of the uh, blocks of coal into this coal, uh, coke oven just to make it you know, twice as fast there. Uh, but it looks like we are going to be just fine here. We should have another three uh, blocks of coke in here. We do indeed. So uh, we'll craft those down uh, into actual coke -oak. And again, we need 32 if this is going to work. So we're going to take 32 coke -oak. We're going to run that 32 coke through our crusher over here. That's going to make the uh, the coke dust. But then I'm going to put that coke dust over here in the squeezer. And so I will temporarily turn off the... Uh, I'll just swap the channel there for a second. So there's nothing in the squeezer when we need it and yeah that should be everything we're going to make the graphite rods once we have the graphite rods we can put those in the arc furnace and um, we just take 30 seconds per rainbow ingot if you have 4096 hours per tick so it is going to take us uh, by the looks of it five minutes uh, to make five, 10 rainbow ingots just through time alone uh, even if we're as efficient as it is possible uh, for us to be 
But uh, I am hopeful. Uh, we might end up enlisting the help of our nether star generator. And we might have to do that in a minute anyway, because I'm, I'm, I'm a little cautious about the fact that, you know, given that we've just stopped the uh, hemp seeds going in there, I think it's very possible that there's not enough power to run this industrial squeezer. So what we might do is we might make some more nether stars and then maybe put in like a few speed upgrades as well into the old, uh, the old generator. We could, of course, turn the rainbow generator back on. Like all of these generators do uh, still have enough fuel in them to run for uh, at least another minute, I think. So we could do that as well. Uh, you know, even if we just do a quick lever flick on and off, that is 25 million redstone flux, which is absolute madness. Unfortunately, we don't have the uh, like storage capabilities to uh, to hold it all. There we go. So unfortunately, it looks like we can't use the engineer's workbench here because we there's no recipe for the arc furnace electrode blueprint, which is unfortunate. Um, so we are going to have to make a rod metal press, which is more steel plates. So I'm glad we didn't use uh, all of our steel plates earlier in the stream. Uh, let me go and actually reconnect that. We want to set that back to uh, to brown again. So hopefully. The, uh, the seeds end up going through there and we end up making more power, which I think is why our system is currently offline. So steel plates plus, is it the old wire cutters? Yeah, it is. And of course, those guys are probably hiding out over in here. They are indeed. Now, uh, I would assume that we probably need the other blueprint for this. Yes, the metal press mold blueprint. And then we'll go rod. And then we'll go... Rod, there we go. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, four of the old uh, hop graphite ingots gets you one electrode. And uh, you can't do this with the hopper, of course. You have to drop them on uh, if it's more than one item. And uh, I believe we, we do need all three electrodes if we want this to, uh, to work. So we need a fair bit more coal coke. We do have almost enough to get another electrode, but of course we need three in uh, in total here, which is less than ideal. These go um, at the top up here. And you'll see now if we put all of the uh, required items in, I don't think it's going to, uh, to work. The good news, chat, is that there is a mod installed that allows us to make an improved coke oven. This guy right here, reinforced coke brick. So we can upgrade our coke oven to be faster and to utilize power to, to produce things quicker as well. Now, I'm going to consult the wiki real quick because if I if I remember correctly, it's not quite as simple as just putting down 27 reinforced coke brick. Yeah, so this one is made with 18 reinforced coke brick and nine steel sheet metal. Okay, that seems very doable, chat. Let me make my uh, map smaller there. It's in your immersive engineering book, is it? Because it's not for immersive engineering, it's an add-on mod. So I have no idea where that... Oh, immersive tech, there it is, yeah. Coke oven advanced. This guy right here is what we're going to make. Thank you, chat. It is indeed in the uh, in the old book. So yeah, we need 18 advanced coke brick, 9 sheet metal, and then a hopper. That's very doable, I think. Yeah, we are going to need more steel plates. But again, that is completely fine. Just swap this guy out again. For the old uh, the old plate cast here. There we go. Let those uh, cook along, and then we just need actual coke brick. Now I feel like it probably does make sense just to take the coke ovens that we have and upgrade those as opposed to uh, you know retaining these and getting more of them. So I will go ahead and uh, and pull that down there. We are going to have to do a bit of reconfiguring I think at the top uh, because this transfer node isn't going to work there. I think we need to put a hopper there uh, in the future. And we'll start with just the one, but if uh, you know if it's still not fast enough, we can, of course, make a second uh, upgraded coke oven as well. Of course, we don't need 27 coke brick this time around, or 27 upgraded coke brick. We only need 18. But we do also then need the, uh, the old sheet metal. We need nine of it. And right now, we only have three, so we are going to have to get some more plates for that as well. So uh, one, two, three, and then it's got uh, the six more on top of that. Hoppers, of course, are going to be fairly easy to come by. I'm going to put in... Like, even more steel here. We should have quite a bit of steel now from our blast furnace. Yeah, we've got 21 more blocks there. Perfect. So we can craft those down as well. Good stuff, good stuff. So uh, steel really shouldn't be a problem for us, I don't think, here. 
Uh, that is going to be enough to get us the other nine reinforced coke brick. And so now we just need enough of the uh, shield, uh, the steel plates to make all of the uh, sheet metal. Perfect. All right, so let's see then, champ. We need six more sheet metal, like this. We then need 18 advanced coke brick. Now, the whole point, of course, of... I'm going to move this now, because the whole point, of course, of or one of the whole points of the advanced version is that you can use preheaters. And again, the game does add the mod, which is called the Immersive Tech. It's an add-on mod for uh, immersive engineering. Does add coke oven preheaters. The whole point of that, uh, the whole point of the advanced coke oven is to allow preheaters. So we should build this in such a way that uh, we can actually take use, or make use, I should say, of those uh, of those preheaters, which I believe do much like the blast furnace, go down either side. So if we do this with a hopper on top, like that, that should be everything if we go and give it a right click. Perfect. Again, becomes very, uh, very slender. If we want to make the preheaters, we need external heaters, which do require copper wire, which thankfully I do think that we have. And so hopefully we do want to make two of these actually. So I guess we want four of these. So let me get like another 16 of those if we can, which we can't unfortunately, but we'll come back to that uh, in a second. So in an ideal world, we do want four of those. And uh, it would seem we do need more iron plates. Thankfully, Isaac of the past did put some uh, iron into here. So getting more iron sheet metal is not going to be a problem for us. That's one. And unfortunately, we are going to be missing what it takes to make the second one because we need some more uh, copper wire. But again, that really shouldn't be too bad because we do have copper and we have the, uh, the old wire press as well. All right, that should be hopefully enough to get some more of the old LV wire coil, craft up another one of those, and boom, and boom, nice. All right, so once you have two of these, uh, unlike with the blast furnace, these ones do lie down, which is a little janky looking, <laughs> but it does work. And I'm hopeful we can get one of those in as well. I might have to break the wall a little bit here just to, there we go, perfect. And again, they do require power. So how do I want to do this is a good question, Chan. I think for now, we're going to live with a little bit of jankiness. And we'll just do something like this. I will, of course, attempt to make that look a little nicer in the future. We'll kind of hide these under the floor. But for now, uh, in the interest of, uh, of speed, I'm hopeful that uh, putting some, uh, some coal or even some blocks of coal uh, into here is going to be a little bit faster. It is definitely a little bit faster. For reference, this is the speed in the normal coke oven. 1%, 2%. This one's doing 14, 15, 16. Like, it's going up faster. It's still slow, of course. Like, it's, it's not, you know the speed of light or anything, but it's definitely going up faster. Which is always good. And uh, I actually am not sure. I assume that they're... Well, I assume a few things. One, I assume that uh, this guy... And you know what? I'm going to use these little mini chests here. I assume that this is where the uh, the coal coke will be exported. I also assume that there's like a uh, a port on the back maybe for, uh, for the courier cert. Yeah, I assume that's what this is right here. So maybe I can just put down my fluid trash can on the back there to get rid of the extra extra creosote. I'm hopeful that will work so we don't get clogged up. That does indeed work. Nice. So the cold coke is uh, outputted to the front. Uh, I assume the creosote got, uh, got tanked out the back there. It disappeared somewhere. So that should be perfectly fine. I guess while we wait, what we can do as has been uh, suggested by the Twitch chat, uh, is we can look at making the old uh, Rod of the Bifrost. Which I don't think is going to be too bad. Uh, we need two Elementium, two Pixie Dust, and one Dragonstone. Uh, and if memory serves me right, that is uh, one, two, three, four Iron, two Mana Pearls, and one Diamond, I think. We're going to make four Mana Steel, two Mana Pearls, one Mana Diamond. These should make us two Elementium. 
It does indeed, as well as two dragon, or two uh, pixie dust, and then one dragon stone, and boom. Nice, we get a rod of the Bifrost, which uh, if we grab the old Lexica Britannia, I don't think we're going to be using it for its intended purpose, but uh, I do believe... Also, did we not have a better Lexica Britannia? Maybe it's in my... Uh... Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so now you can hold control to open up the Lexica Britannia to the page of the Bifrost. The rainbow bridge that reaches between worlds and realms of the gods. While this item, the Rod of the Bifrost, doesn't exactly do that, it allows the holder, via the right click, at the cost of some mana, to create a rainbow bridge in the direction he or she is looking at. The bridge extends as far as 100 blocks and vanishes after about 15 seconds. Only one bridge can be created for any given Rod of the Frost at a time. As soon as the old bridge, va uh, old bridge vanishes, a new one is created. Excuse me? Hold on. Oh my goodness, look at that. That is actually pretty cool, chat. I don't know if it's going to come in particularly useful at this point in time, but if we do need to do more exploration, we can uh, we can do something like that, right? You know, and then as soon as it's ready to... We have to wait for it to disappear before it can go again, which is maybe the, the slight downside. But uh, presumably, with our Shulker Ring, like as soon as, this, uh, as soon as this disappears, we can kind of float and then send out another one. Oh, and it can even do like diagonals as well, so you can kind of like fire it up and down. That's pretty cool. I like it. I've never actually used the, uh, the the Rod of the Bifrost, but that's pretty neat. And that should be our third and final Electrode. It is. Nice. Okay. So now, chat, if we head on back down to the Rainbow Room, if we put in this third and final Graphite Electrode, we should see the power begin to tank. And in the top left there, you will see that the Arc Furnace is beginning the process of, uh, of creating the Rainbow Ingots. Now... The, uh, the key part to take away here is the fact that we're very low on power. But as I mentioned, I think what I will do here is I think we'll grab the Nether Star Generator. And we'll also craft, like, hopefully a couple of Nether Stars. Again, it looks like we're actually um, very much so out of, uh, out of power for our system, which is a little unfortunate. Uh, there's not really a whole lot I can do about that outside of putting down... The, uh, the Nether Star Generator close by here, but uh, if I do that, then we end up in a situation where I start to die. Um, I guess I am going to take the Withered Effect here, unfortunately. We're actually... So, it goes quite fast once we have the Arc Furnace. Uh, oh, sorry, once we have the um, Nether Star Generator down. Like, it is going pretty quick there. We might not need more Nether Stars. Like, we have two, and they each last two minutes in the Nether Star Generator, right? So, that means that uh, in total... That's going to be four minutes, and uh, if J.I. is to believe, we only need five minutes to get the ten rainbow generators, so we might be okay here, actually. I think, chat, that we're basically there. Yeah, we're onto the last one here, and that nether star, gen uh, that nether star in the nether star generator is going to last for at least another uh, like minute and a half here, so uh, I'm pretty sure that we are good to go. This is the fifth, uh, or the tenth even, and final rainbow ingot. All right, chat, we have done it. Ten rainbow ingots look at that oh perfect and that is that quest at the end there complete so now if we want to make the rainbow blocks we have to right click a bifrost block with a rainbow ingot so a bifrost block is that uh, this guy right here it's crafted with the rod of the bifrost and some elf glass so let's head on back up here and i made a mistake of walking <laughs> gosh dang it i hit shift so i fell back down i might die here again because I fell back, I went past the freaking <laughs> Nether Star Generator. Gosh, dang it. That's fine, chat. Less than ideal, of course. But not, not terrible. So, let's get some regular old glass. Again, I think we need 10. So I'll get uh, three more here, and we'll, uh, we'll smelt that up. The alloy smelter does do three at a time, which is very nice. We'll turn that all into mana glass. We'll turn all of that mana glass into elf glass. And then we place down and right... Oh, no, we craft, even. My bad. The Rod of the Bifrost with the Elf Glass to get Bifrost Glass. And then we right-click the Bifrost Glass with a Rainbow Ingot to turn it into a Rainbow Block. So I assume, chat, that our best course of action here is probably going to be to put these down. Now, I'm thinking where do I want to put this? Um, that's a good question, Isaac. Um, 
Where do I want to put this portal chat? I'll put it over here somewhere, I think, near to my uh near to my waystone. Let's do you, you. It does light up as well, which is lovely. This is actually very nice glass. I might use more of it to build with. But if we build the whole portal up, like so, what we should, and I want to be very careful not to break the glass here. I assume we get it back, but just, just in case, let's try not to break it. And then now, if we shift right click with, or just right click even, with the rainbow blocks, or with the rainbow ingots, we get these rainbow blocks, which again, look insane. I was wondering what I was taking damage from them. I, I thought for a second it might be the sheer power of the rainbow blocks. And then now to light it up, we just use, use the rod of the Bifrost. Chat, we've done it. All right, look at that. So now we've got more rainbow blocks, should we need them? And here we are, we've finally made it to the overworld chat. And uh, presumably, if we grab our terrain scanner and then maybe like the culinary generator, I assume we could start rebuilding the overworld, right? Much like we've been rebuilding the nether. And uh, not only that, but that also opens up a whole new quest line here, Sun, Moon, and Stars. Look at that. We're going to get into, uh, finally, some Void Miners, so we can uh, not have to rely wholly on our, our Orchid going forward. We can start to mine all of our ores uh, using these, using power. Uh, we can get into some Tech Reborn, some more Immersive Engineering, get still some Advanced Rocketry, and then uh, on to the, the old final quest there at the end. My goodness. We're getting close, chat. We're getting close. Let's uh, delete some waypoints there. Uh, let's see about grabbing this Culinary Generator real quick. And then, like, I'll grab, you know, some mineral berries. Actually, no, let's do apples. we got a lot of apples. And let's see if we can't regenerate, like, a Chongosa of the uh, of the overworld. So, we've learned a little bit from the nether that we should probably... Oh, no. That's fine, actually. We do have Forgiving Void installed, and we also do have an angel ring, uh, a shulker ring. Uh, we've learned from the nether that if we're going to rebuild a chunk, we should probably do it like at the corner of a chunk, like the uh, the terrain scanner itself doesn't actually line up with chunks, but uh, it's easier for us to kind of build more chunks going forward if we start the terrain generator or the terrain, yeah, the terrain scanner in a corner like this with the culinary generator, with some apples, make sure that's set to full speed, turn that on and hopefully, oh yeah, there we go. Let me get out of the way here. So I don't, uh, no, please let me get out of the way. I don't want to uh, to die <laughs> when this passes the past. Chat, look at that. Look at that. I don't want bi we're in a mega tiger biome, by the looks of it, which is interesting. We could also, I guess, do some mining as well here in the overworld now, which is also uh, very nice indeed. But yeah, I guess now, much like with the uh, the nether before it, we can begin, you know, picking up our uh, terrain scanner, shimming that over by 16 blocks, putting it down again, and then just building more and more of the overworld until we get, you know, as much overworld as we need. I don't know how much we're going to need for all of our uh, all of our different quests. I assume there are some resources specific to the overworld that we are going to have to mine for, much like we did uh, with the nether uh, before it. But yeah, I'm ready, chat. I'm ready for, uh, for whatever we get here. Let's, uh, you know, once again, try not to die. We could use... This, but Unlike the nether, I think the biome scanner might be a little bit more useful this time around uh, because, you know, in the nether, there's not really that many biomes, but here in the overworld, uh, if we're looking for a specific biome, uh, the biome scanner, and specifically the advanced biome scanners, uh, are going to allow us to uh, to scan very large areas to try and find, like, the specific biome that we want uh, and then, you know, go and use the terrain scanner there as opposed to just building and building and building with the terrain scanner until we find the biome that we want. So that might actually come in useful. And in fact, there is um, a quest right at the start to upgrade our biome scanner uh, to, a, uh, to a higher tier. But uh, I think, chat, that is probably where I'm going to wrap up today's stream. Next time, we'll come back. We will begin looking at... Uh, we still do have a few quests, of course, to do in uh, in Chapter 2, uh, like the Angel Ring. Uh, the LPG here is just a... Uh, we just have to actually get some LPG, like, in a bucket. Up until now, we've just been automatically pumping it around with uh, with fluid pipes, so not really an issue. Uh, we, of course, do want to get the data model at some point and the uh, the excavator as well, just if we're going to complete all the, uh, the quests there. Uh, they're not essential, but I think I might do them just for completionists' sake. And then, uh, yeah, we'll look at uh, moving on here. We'll look at getting into Tech Reborn with the old cabling uh, and whatnot. We'll look at getting into uh, 
environmental tech with the void miners, uh, as well as some more immersive engineering, and then hopefully at some point some uh, advanced rocketry as well. And then uh, warp after home. Warp after warp, you finally found a familiar place. All right, well, yeah, for now, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's stream there.